Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, had a request from a viewer for us to go over kind of our recap of this past growing season, what we liked, what we didn't like, what done good here and what didn't. Um, so we've made us a list and we're just going to kind of talk to you about a few things um, that we do recommend and we're in zone 7B. Yep, 7B. 7B. Uh, so just keep that in mind when we are talking about some of this stuff because, you know, different growing zones, things do better some places than others. So this is just our experience, and uh, so and, I guess we'll get started. And just in case you don't know, we're in the northern part of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We're right on the Virginia line. Yep. Yep. So we got like a huge list here. We may not talk about it all because it might be a two-hour long video if we talked about it all. But we will talk about what we did like and for sure did like and what we definitely won't be planting again. Um, obviously, first thing first, yellow straight neck squash has always been a go-to for us. Pickling cucumbers have always been a go-to for us. I think every single garden around here has probably got pickling cucumbers. And, and with the trellis that we use with the cattle panels, I think we got double the yield and it may have just been because... I could find them better uh, being up on that those cattle panels, but um, I really I got more this year than I normally get with the pickling cucumbers. So as far as a new one for us this year was the market more cucumber. And actually, Flutie Lick Homestead ain't that what? Yeah, that's where we. So he's, that's, he's the one that recommended it. Yeah, we we watch his channel. So if you don't watch him, check him out too. We enjoy watching his videos, but. Uh, he talked about the market more cucumbers and he recommended them. So we thought we'd try them this year and they get to be a pretty good size. Uh, they're good slicing cucumber, but they're also good for making pickles because what I noticed is even though they were big cucumbers, they didn't have a lot of seeds in them and they had a really good taste. So. And they still tended to stay firm and crunchy as a pickle too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they were very productive. Yes. <laughs> and so we definitely, that's one we'll definitely be replanting next year. They were probably one of our last ones to quit producing. Mm -hmm. And they went right through the whole growing season, no problems. We did have another type of cucumber. It was some type it was of like hybrid a, that like I an English cucumber. I can't remember really. it. That thing grew that long. I mean, they were huge cucumbers. And they but, were light green, whatever they were. Um, yeah, I can't remember the name of it for nothing. But if I can get my hands on some more of those seeds, I'll probably plant some more of them again next year too. They were okay. Well, they make good ones for Jacob because yeah. he likes eating so many cucumbers. <laughs> he eat one like two cute. I mean, one cucumber equal two. Yeah, they were equal so big. two. Yeah. <clears throat> all right and then uh jambalaya okra seemed to be her favorite i'm not an okra fan so the jambalaya okra what i liked about it was um it produces okra in bunches so it wasn't just like the leaves grew up like a normal okra plant and the okra was here and there and uh these actually grew like branches the jambalaya okra does and so you have okra on all these branches so what worked good for me is I like to make pickled okra. I just make like refrigerated pickled okra or whatever. I don't can any, but um, I had enough okra at one time that I could make me a batch of okra pickles. Um, and I wasn't having to wait, you know, and pick a little here and pick a little there. So. And y'all, we only had one plant of, our, of uh, the yeah. jambalaya. And I had <laughs> plenty to do with with just that, because we only had one that, for whatever reason, we, we planted we, it too we early. We planted it too yeah. early, and it got, it, we had a cold spell, and I think that's why it didn't jump, uh, germinate like it should have. But then we also had emerald green. Yeah, that was one of them. Uh, it was a heirloom. The survival seeds. Yeah, it was a survival, one of the survival seeds, if y'all remember that video. It was okay. Um, I did not like it, the texture and everything as much as the jambalaya. And plus, it was extremely prickly. Like, you ever touched fiberglass and it got in your hand? When you pick that stuff, that's what it feels like. <laughs> and it and it grew so tall, she couldn't even pick it. Yeah, yeah, and it got tall really, it. really fast, and I couldn't reach it. I was having to bend over the plants to get it down, so. Um, I'm going to talk corn for a second. Y'all know from other videos that I love corn. So, as far as sweet corn goes, which is, you know, your regular garden corn you're going to eat, you can make canned corn, corn on the cob, whatever. Honey Select has always been our go-to. Many, many, many years ago, like, I mean, when I was a kid, we planted a uh, Silver Queen. Right. And somebody told my mom and daddy about Honey Select, and we've been stuck on Honey Select ever since. That's all we had ever planted up until this year. And y'all, I'm still a fan of Honey Select. 
<laughs> I'm still convinced there's nothing any better than Honey Select out there. We planted peaches and cream, and we planted candy corn. That's the only. I do have another variety I'm gonna plant next year. Serendipity. Um, or yeah, something. serendipity. It's a it's a bicolor corn. Let us know in the comments if you've tried that one because we are gonna plant some next year. Um, matter of fact, <laughs> I've actually got five pounds of seed. <laughs> so we're not gonna plant that much, but that's just how much I I've got. Be prepared. It's a long story, <laughs> but anyways, um. Me to say, if somebody tells me there's going to be a seed shortage, I might get a little overkill on some things. But, anyways, back to the subject. The peaches and cream was okay, I guess you could say. She liked it. I love the peaches and cream. I'll tell you why. So, it had more of a corn flavor. The corn flavor was a lot stronger than the Honey Select, but the texture... The, was not as crunchy as the Honey Select. Y'all, if you know never this. eat Honey Select, when you bite into it, fresh off the ear, I mean, fresh off the uh, stalk, and you've boiled it, you bite into that corn, it pops in your mouth. I mean, it's it's amazing. <laughs> but that peaches and cream, I don't think I've ever been as disappointed when I've been into that as I was then. But see, I, I loved it though. I loved the peaches and cream. I love the, the flavor, the flavor <laughs> of it. Um, so, and I also canned the peaches and cream because. Well, that is one thing we will say. The peaches and cream and the candy corn both make a better canned corn. They seem to do better. Yeah. They seem to hold up to the pressure canning better than the honey select. They didn't turn as. I don't know, the Honey Select, like it like overcooks it or something. I think it's the sugar content that's in, where it's yeah. a triple sleet. It, um, it almost caramelizes the corn, but then the peaches and cream and the candy corn, neither one, they didn't do that. And it's it's it made a really good corn to can. You get a lot more cream yeah. out of the yeah, peaches I make the and cream, cream and the candy corn. corn. Yeah. So, I don't know. We may be planting peaches and cream again. That one's kind of so. up in I there. I like it. So we probably will. <laughs> the candy corn... Honestly, as far as flavor goes, I think it was probably... It was okay. It was all right. I didn't like I, the texture of the, the candy corn. We probably won't be planting that again. We were just kind of experimenting with some stuff. So, since we're talking about corn, I guess we can talk about field corn real quick. Y'all knew that we planted the uh, Hickory King corn. Definitely going to be planting more Hickory King corn next year. And we hope to have some seeds. And we might even have yeah, seeds available. We haven't shelled any of that stuff yet. We've just been letting it dry. Um, so we may have seeds for sale that we could put up. You going to put them on the website? I Is may that? put them on the LawsonFarm.com. I'm working on that. And I may also, um, I had been thinking about uh, doing a little Etsy store for like some seeds and stuff. So we'll see. And I'll definitely be letting y'all know. You know, whenever that does come around. And uh, the Jimmy Red, we also like the Jimmy Red. And the cornmeal from the Jimmy Red is really good. But I'm not saying I'll never plant Jimmy Red again because I probably will. But next year, I think we're going to spend most of our space on the Hickory King. I don't think we'll be planting the Jimmy Red next year. Um, just because the Hickory King performs so much better than the Jimmy Red. And if in poor dirt. In poor soil, and we've got a limited number of places we can plant stuff like that. So we want to make sure whatever we plant is hopefully going to give us the best results for what little bit of space we've got. Um, and of course, we planted the Indian corn too, and I'm probably going to plant Indian corn I like again Indian next year. Indian corn is fun. Yeah, I mean that's just <laughs> really just for decoration and for fun. I mean, you shut back that chuck and open it up and. You just don't know what you're going to you get. You never know what you're going to get, really, because each each cob is probably going to be different. Um, so, with that being said, now let's talk about green beans. Okay. This was a good one for us this year. We have been... So, back to, like, when I was at home, Mom and Daddy always planted jade beans, which is a bush-type bean. And that's all we've planted ever since we've been married. They're it's, killer to pick, just so... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it sucks picking a jade bean because it's a bush bean you have to bend over to pick them and by the time you've picked a bushel of beans you about you, dead your back hurts <laughs> so this year i was kind of like i was determined i was going to try some type of pole bean so you could actually pick the thing standing up 
And I'm going to tell you, that was the best decision we ever made. So out of those um, survival seeds, we had some Kentucky Wonder mm -hmm. green beans. And now, previously, before we got the survival seeds, I had already ordered some uh, Kentucky Blue Wonders from Hoss. So the Kentucky Blue Wonders are like a hybrid between a Kentucky Wonder and, and Blue a Blue Lake. Lake. Mm -hmm. All right. Those turned out to be good beans, too. We'll, we'll probably be planting those again for sure. They put off good. They did. Mm -hmm. And they took... <laughs> Y'all, if, if beans could have been abused, that was these. Yeah, because maybe. we put them in the ground and we <laughs> never went back to them. So, but let me tell you, the Kentucky Wonder beans... Were amazing. They were mm -hmm. the best green bean I've ever put in my mouth. By far, there's nothing else out there that touched them. At least in our opinion. And Andy doesn't usually. I'll just tell y'all this. I like fresh green beans... Like, he, he would rather have them pressure canned and already canned and then eat them that way with the jade beans anyway. He didn't like them fresh. He never has because they make that squeaky noise when you eat them, you know, <laughs> even to know if you cook fire out of them. And let me clarify but, something real quick. The way we're eating green beans, we're in the South, y'all. They're broke up into little chunks like this. How do people eat them? Because some people oh. eat them, the whole green bean and everything. <laughs> right. We're not eating them like that. They're not stir-fried beans. They're not <laughs> grilled beans or nothing like that. We're eating them. Warmed up in a pan with a chunk of meat in them. That's how we eat them here in the south, y'all. So, <laughs> but the um, the Kentucky Wonders, I cooked them fresh, and y'all, they were. He even liked them. Like, of course, I liked them. It don't take much that I don't like, but he loved them. And so, I mean, I I can. I can't. I didn't I, can any of those. I don't know. Thank no, you. No, I had didn't can, can. I didn't can any of those. I just would go out there and I would pick a mess about twice a week and have fresh green beans all yeah. summer long. And I had just enough because we didn't plant many. And I had just enough to to do that. And they have big beans in them, but the beans and the the holes are not tough. And they're, they're they were tender. And so I mentioned we always put a chunk of meat in them. You know, most of the time it's a piece of fat back or middling like, meat or yeah. something, some type of salted down meat. And whatever for whatever reason, those Kentucky Wonders, they they soaked up the flavor of that meat, and they were just amazing. So, go back to the jade beans. While those jade beans are are pretty good green beans, and they're tender. I mean, they're tender. They're green tender, beans, the, and they don't have strings. The be they're better young than they are old, but they're good all the way through. But if you can pick them when they're younger, they're actually better than they are when they get a little bit older. Just don't let them turn into shelly beans because they get really tough. Yeah, they're no good when they get that far. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm honestly I'm not sure that we might plant jade beans again next year. Even though we've been planting them, they kind of like our go-to that we've always planted for green beans. I don't even know if we're going to be planting those next year. Maybe just because of the fact that a lot of our people who buy stuff from us they like that, the they love the jade beans. Yeah. And so if we do plant bean, jade beans next year, it's going to be for that reason only. Um, now, we did plant some yellow wax beans. Not a fan of those. No, they didn't really have a taste. No matter how much I seasoned them, I don't know. I didn't really. The texture was different, and they didn't. I don't know. They just didn't have much of a much of a taste at all. And we also planted some kind of mixture of beans. It had purple beans, green beans, and yellow I think beans. They were in some it. kind of wax beans, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like a some type of burpee seeds. It was just and they were okay. Mixture. They weren't. They were. They were fairly good. Not, I would call them mediocre. Yeah. But they now, terrible. one that I probably won't be planting again also is the first time I've ever planted them. And everybody around here either loves them or hates them. It's white half runner green beans. You either love them or hate them. I mean, there's people who've bought beans from us and don't want green beans because we don't have half right runner green beans. That's the only thing they'll, that's all, all they want. So we planted some late. We planted some very late beans and we're just able to squeeze a picking off of them right before frost. And I wasn't impressed. I'm probably not planting those again. No, the the flavor was a little off. Let it come here. And they uh, had a terrible string on them. Yeah, the strings were horrible. Like the Kentucky Wonders have strings, but them half white runners, it was they were horrible. And the sad thing is, y'all, I got five pounds of these things too. <laughs> Anybody want some seeds? <laughs> Long story short, a lady had a bunch of them left over and uh from this spring and i bought them from her a little bit on the cheap side so i might be trying to sell some beans this spring to somebody but um you know that 
that's what we were mainly doing. We we experimented with a bunch of different varieties of of different stuff this year, just so we would know. Are we? Do we really like what we've been planting forever? Mm -hmm. You know, because it, it never hurts to do a little. Even if you've been planting the same thing for twenty years, it never hurts to try something new. No, nope. every once in a while. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Up until the last two years, I never realized there were so many varieties of different stuff out there. Um, because. For the most part, I've always bought seeds from our local mom and pop farm and garden stores. And that's usually still where probably 95% of our seed comes from that we plant. Come from the local hardware store or the fertilizer store, whatever, you know, the, the agricultural stores around here. And, uh, you know, they only have certain varieties of stuff. So after we got to looking online and looking at different websites and stuff, golly, there's so many different varieties of stuff yeah. to plant. But, um, anyway, so we did some experimenting and, and it come out good, you know, because like I said, with the Kentucky Wonders, we'll definitely, definitely be oh, planting yeah. those next year. We hope to plant enough. I want to plant enough next year that I have enough to can. Because yeah. this year we were just trying them. We just had, because in those survival garden seeds. It was a small pack. It was a very small pack. So we only had just a very few seeds. And we, we couldn't save the seeds from those. They're heirloom seed, but we couldn't save the seed because we planted them right next to... There was some kind of bean, lazy wife bean. Yeah, had. yeah, I planted those, and they didn't, I never got the first bean off. We had them. the prettiest vines you ever yeah. saw, and never had the I guess first the bean. Signs look right or something. But we did have blooms. We just never had never a bean. Never had a bean. Mm -mm. So we were worried they probably cross pollinated or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we probably actually could have saved the seeds from those, but they wouldn't have been true. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they might not. We just but they were right decided not to. Yeah. So, all right. We're at Mountain Pride Tomatoes. Mountain Pride. One thing I didn't mention here, y'all, a lot of people in that one video we done on the popcorn asked what variety of popcorn we planted. And it's a, it's a hybrid type uh, popcorn, so we can't save the seeds from it. We did actually replant some of these seeds for Jacob's Garden. For Jacob's garden. Yeah. And uh, they produced ears, and they weren't, but they just weren't quite as big. Um, that could have been just to, to do, you know, his garden alone. But, uh, Anyways, it's called Purdue 410 Hybrid. And from what I've learned, that's mostly like a commercial variety of popcorn that most people plant. Um, but it's it's done well for us, so it's probably what we're going to keep on planting. Literally, our popcorn this year, we planted it and forgot about it. We planted it and <laughs> left it alone, and it done its thing. Because we were just kind of like, if it makes something, it makes something. If it don't, it don't. You hear it in young and <laughs> Y'all, if you can hear these kids in their background, they're not killing each other. They're just, I don't know what they're, they're playing doing in the sunroom. But, but um, anyways. Um, but the the popcorn, though, because uh, I know people want to see me pop it and shell it. We were just kind of letting it lay out and dry out. I haven't shelled any yet, but as soon as I do, I'll bring y'all, I'll bring that video to y'all and show you how we shell it, show you how I pop it, and all that good stuff. It actually probably should have done been shelled, y'all, but. We've had a lot going on. Honestly, but. the last two months have just went like this. I don't know where they went. <coughs> Had a lot going on outside of the room, I guess we should say. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but, um, so, we're on the Mountain Pride tomatoes, so that's one that we'll definitely plant next year. We tried that variety two years ago. If you're looking for a Canon tomato, now, I ain't talking about a sauce tomato, but if you're looking for a Canon tomato or something that's going to give you a lot of production and, um, do really good just good tomatoes all the way around mountain prize are the way to go now like i said and i didn't know this till we talked to greg at hall's tools at the homesteader saying but the the word mountain that's in it he said that they don't do worth a darn down there in georgia where he lives yeah because they're, Cause I, they're I, a mountain I, tomato you a know? mountain variety yeah yeah and um so mm -hmm. i didn't even think about that because we were telling him how much we enjoyed the mountain fried tomatoes so if you're in some cooler regions they'll probably do fine for you um but they produce tomatoes in bunches so instead of just having one ripe tomato here and one ripe tomato here and one ripe tomato here you'll get four or five in a bunch you know all at one time and they don't the skins are a little thicker they don't crack normally i had a few nope. crack this year but nothing like compared to the rest of the varieties um but they they they're like crack resistant and they're a really good tomato and i just recommend them I, and i'll be y'all if y'all watch my spaghetti sauce video i don't plant romas um i just don't we planted one year i don't see no need in it i just have to cook my sauce and stuff down longer than i would if i had aroma because i got more juice in them but 
Um, I use them for all my tomato tomato stuff, the yeah. Mountain Prides. And they seem to be, I'm not going to say they are because it may not be the same for you, but they seem to be a lot more resistant to the blight and stuff. Yeah, that's because true. Because we had a terrible case with the blight out here in our garden mm -hmm. this year. And those tomatoes were never affected by it. They just seemed to, well, they got like some on the bottom leaves, but then they didn't go all the way yeah, up. Yeah, like they didn't the go all the way up the plant. Uh -huh. And another thing that I've noticed, not from this year, but in years past, we've planted tomatoes in an area where most of the tomatoes would, would get um, blossom in rot. And these didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I think they're, are they... Are they a hybrid? Yes, they're not an heirloom. Yes. I don't think they're an heirloom. They might got, if any of y'all know, correct me. I think they're a hybrid though. We've not tried to save the seeds from. We, we haven't saved seeds starts. from any tomatoes. Yeah, we usually buy plant starch for those. Well, we don't have to save seeds for the pink brandy wines though, because they just come up everywhere on their own. <laughs> they were all the way around our house this year, and they <laughs> produced some of the biggest, prettiest tomatoes yeah. you've ever seen just around the house. So, y'all, pink brandy wine is a good tomato, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, it's anyway. a good sandwich. It makes a heck of a good sandwich. You get a tomato like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, like they have I said, a great flavor. We literally have pink brandy wines that come up everywhere every year, and yep. they do great. <laughs> and we don't even, they don't get fertilizer, <laughs> they don't get. They don't get any type of nothing. They get no care. They don't even get staked up. They just do run whatever, wild and yeah. do their thing. And they produce. Now, one of the, the brandy wine. wine is an airline too, so it will come back true to seed. But then you got also the one black, of Megan's favorites, the black creme. The black creme tomatoes have the best flavor out of about any tomato I've ever eaten. I, I love the taste of the black creams, but... That's solely, really, in my opinion, the best thing you can do with them is they're just a good sandwich tomato because they are the tomatoes that you get one here and you get one there yep. and they get the blight and they die because they're very, they seem to be very sensitive, at least for us, like, because we planted them the last two years. So I may get a handful of tomatoes off of them to enjoy my sandwich, but <laughs> um, other than that, you know, they eventually get taken over by a disease, um, so they're not... They are not really disease resistant. Um, but they do make a heck of a good tomato sandwich and it's a good tasting tomato. I just wouldn't recommend you planting a whole bunch of them if you aim to yep. can tomatoes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and one other bean that I forgot to mention, which is not a green bean, but um, the October beans we planted, the Tapazio beans. I they don't... another name too, but I can't remember what it they, is. The, it was a cranberry bean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so these were a bush type variety that we got from Hoss Tools. We have planted October beans for years. We actually decided we weren't going to plant them anymore, yeah. and then we seen a video on Hoss Tools and decided to try his. The ones that we have planted before in years past were a vining type. Um, they they run, and they never done good at all for us. I don't know. They would get eat up with like a disease or something, and we might get one small picking off of them, and they just weren't worth. And they're, de they're delicious, but they it wasn't are. worth me just canning two jars of, they are delicious. of beans. You and know. that's why we kept planting them, because we loved them so much. So, one night we were watching the, the Robo Road Garden Show, and he was talking about the October beans that he had picked up. So, I, you know, I checked them out, and they were a different, they were a bush variety. And they done excellent mm -hmm. for us. They done really and good. And actually, I think they're better than the variety that we used to plant. Yeah, I the think taste so is too. better. They're, they're, they're the delicious. beans a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and the taste is quite a bit better. The way I know how to explain it to you, anybody that likes leftover pintos, if you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, where they get thick and creamy. <laughs> yeah, where they get thick and creamy <laughs> after they're leftover. You know, they're better leftover than they are the day you cook them. That's what the October beans put me in mind of. They're like leftover pintos, and they are so good. Um, and then the other type of beans or peas, whatever you want to call them that we planted, were, um, so that one video that we made where we were down in a garden, and I had what I called the Crowder peas that were just vining all up the trellis. They were everywhere, running every which way. They were running over up up the corn stalks those are a colossal i finally figured out what variety that what so variety they were, they colossal were. yeah they're, they're colossal crown of peas were they yeah but the deer had done that's right yeah, yeah you're right but um but yeah they were colossal crowder peas and they're a good pea i don't uh if you don't have a lot of space you probably shouldn't plant them because they take over 
and they're going to vine up every Even single... Even if you have a trail, it's like they're going to run whatever. They're going to run plumb to the top of that trellis and then go somewhere else. Yeah. These things go everywhere, but they make a ton. They made way more peas than we could ever imagine eating. Like we, we finally give, just let the deer. Yeah, we <laughs> give away peas. We can peas. We <laughs> save some for seed, and the deer got their share too. Yep. And uh, so you know they they produce like crazy. But one new favorite that we found this year, I can remember years ago, my grandpa used to plant a purple hold crowder pea. I don't think this is the same one that he planted, but um, it was pretty dang good. We planted some purple hole pink eye peas. They are delicious. They are delicious. Like way better. Got a black eyed pea beat all two pieces. They're they're a bush type pea, so mm -hmm. you know they they're going to stay low to the ground in a bush. And uh, but the beans were kind of like you didn't. It wasn't like the jade beans. The beans were kind of stuck out, so you just went through and still grabbed them. Yeah, a lot of bending well, over. Yeah, a lot of them cow peas that grow up on the top. Yeah. Um, so they were fairly easy to pick. A little bit on the harder side to shell yeah. versus those colossal peas. They're small. The peas are their sales yeah. are small. Matter of fact, we had some for supper tonight and <clears throat> they were they delicious. Were delicious. <laughs> but um so that would be our two as far as the cow peas go. Honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with any type of cow pea. Cow peas are good. Mm -hmm. Um absolutely. So Put your little side meat in them. Yeah, that's eat another it. one. You gotta have some meat in them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, about all we got left to talk about is the two the potatoes. All right. Well, you got well, why you got that right with them? Well, we'll talk about it in a minute. Okay. So another thing, we've always planted a ton of potatoes. We always every year plant Kenny Beck potatoes, which is a white potato. And, and we usually plant half of what we have left over and half seed potatoes. We do, and. uh we plant red Pontiac potatoes, so that's the red variety that we plant. We actually got a small bag from Tractor Supply this year. I don't remember what variety it, what variety it was, but um, it was a red potato too, but it was not the red Pontiac, but on a typical year. They looked different. Yeah, they were a little bit different. They, their skin was a lot redder. Yeah. But um, they were good potatoes too. I just don't remember just, what variety Yeah, it was. we just wanted to try the ones at Tractor Supply and see what they were. You know. Well, because we had re replant yeah. our red potatoes, we don't usually buy red seed potatoes. We no. just plant what we have left over. We haven't planted, we haven't bought a red seed potato in forever. Years. <laughs> yeah. But um, and then we planted the purple majesty potatoes. They were good. They taste like a potato. If you don't look at them, <laughs> they taste just like a potato. They taste just like a potato. But the fact that they're purple may mess with you just a minute. <laughs> but the good thing about them is, like, Andy didn't really care for them. But where they have that dark purple, they've got a lot more like antioxidants in it than your regular potato because of the color. You know, that's what makes the color. So that's the one benefit I found to them. But as far as, I think they're just like a novelty. Yeah, I think they're more of a novelty yeah. thing than anything. You know, you can plant you a few of them just for the fun of it. Let the kids dig them up because they're purple. You know, it's odd to and have actually, a purple potato. And actually, if you boil them, they actually quit. They're not purple anymore. Yep. I if we have any of those left over that... No, I didn't eat them. Oh, we've done eat them all? Okay, well, we probably won't be planting them more next year. Yeah, we didn't eat them. I didn't cook them all. If we hadn't... If we'd have had some We didn't have over, a ton. Well, well I, people in my pro, with my produce boxes, they yeah. they really enjoyed them because uh, it was something different. So, between that and then I cooked them quite a bit because I didn't know how good they would keep. So, I cooked those and the red ones first before I start using my white potatoes because the yeah. white potatoes keep the longest. So. Red potatoes usually don't keep quite as long. As the white ones, right. Yeah, the so white I, ones last a while. Yeah, I didn't know how those would do. So y'all know out here on the hillside, we planted a ton of different um, pumpkins and squash and gourds, gourds and everything. I don't remember what all we planted out there because none of it actually done that great. Mm -hmm. The two things that done good out there was this one sunburst squash, which is a patty pan squash. Mm -hmm. It done, it done excellent, but I don't think we're ever going to plant patty pan squash again. I can't figure out what to do. <laughs> I tried different ways of cooking it, and we didn't like it any way that I fixed it. So. These these sunburst squash were the prettiest little squashes you ever seen. The plant was beautiful. It was, and it produced like crazy. Like we had more off of just one, no, yeah. two plants. It was a lot than we could ever imagine eating. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they kept good in the refrigerator. If that is something that you want to try, they kept really good in the refrigerator. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, we may plant one or two next year just because, know. but I, I highly doubt we do. <laughs> So all the pumpkins that were out there, of the two that I can remember, well, we had a jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin. We never even saw none the of that. Um, the Cherokee tan's done pretty dang good out there. 
Out of all of them, the Cherokee tan has done the best, and they taste good. Mm -hmm. You've already made a pie yeah, I made out of them, right? Made a pumpkin pie, yeah. And yeah, so they they were good. So we really liked those, and we had the fairy tale pumpkin that I I did pick it green, but it and it rotted within about a week. It, but it was sap, it was like as soon as we picked it, there was like sap coming out yeah. around the stem, so. coming out from up through the stem, and I I knew right then when I seen that it probably wasn't going to turn right. But, but now the Cherokee I think tans, it should have got bigger. The Cherokee tans that we picked that still had green on them, they're still firm and yep. doing the, okay. The, and the Cherokee tans still look good. They do. So we're definitely be ch planting more Cherokee tan next year. Um, they're uh, and the butternut squash. I really enjoyed. Yeah, the butternuts. I forgot about. The I really enjoyed having the butternut squash, and they did decent. They did I don't think there. they did as good as they were supposed to. No. But we got about a half a bushel basket of butternut squash. But so that spot out there should get better with time because it's hard as a rock, and we literally planted the seed right under the wood chips mm -hmm. and so with time of us adding wood chips to that hillside it should get better and better and better in theory anyways um but we're actually probably well that's a future video but i'll give you a little sneak peek we're probably going to be doing a little bit of something different out there next year planting all of those are we going to turn it into like a perennial garden oh yeah yeah we might be planting some other stuff. Like you, like you I know she it. didn't have a clue what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for another video. We're changing up a lot of our landscape and the way here. we do things. Um, we just haven't had time to do it, y'all. Right. I don't know where time goes, but I'm sure y'all know that feeling too. Well, I'll tell you uh, something we learned up there. We're getting tired of trading the grocery store for the feed and fertilizer <laughs> prices. So you should make a video on that all on its own. I'm, I'm just telling you. I know. I'm just saying you should do that because that, we could talk about that for, uh, forever. <laughs> so that's something. That's kind of our new motto for our, this upcoming, the upcoming year. Our goal this upcoming year is to be, of course, you can only be so self-sufficient, but especially yeah. if you don't have all day, every day to work at it. But um, we're going to try to grow just as much stuff as we possibly can to not only feed us, but to feed our animals mm. too. And that leads me on to something else that we've got coming up we're going to be planting next year. So we shall, what was her name? Sean and Beth? Uh, I, I can't say that. It's not Daughtry. That's not how you say it, but that's how it looks. But De what was Do it? it? Deatry? De uh, yeah. What was the name of their? The Independent Farm. Yeah, the Independent Farm. They wrote a book, and I got to get that book. I ain't, I ain't got it yet, but we want to read that. So we got seeds from them of some type of radish mm -hmm. and the uh, Tromachino squash seeds. We're going to be planting some of those things. I mean, I know that's not going to be feed all of our critters, but, you know, that'll be something else that we can feed with that we don't, we can maybe supplement with. Of course, and supposedly know, that stuff keeps, like, you yes, can that's put it the big up thing. and it keeps, yeah. So, you know, we're going to be planting the Hickory King corn for our animals and for cornmeal and for, um, like, chicken feed, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And y'all, I'm probably not supposed to, but I've been feeding this stuff whole kernel to our chickens. And, 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 and they ain't died. Yet. They ain't died yet. I mean, that's not all I'm feeding them, but they're getting, you know, like maybe every other day I go down there and shell off a couple ears, and and they tear it up. I know they need to get plenty of grit if you feed them whole corn, but the 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 kernel on that hickory king is big, so and they're they're apparently grinding it up, and you know they're crawling doing its job. Mm -hmm. But um, anyways, got off subject here. Also, something that I planted just like uh, last weekend. Well, it might have been this weekend, wasn't it? This last weekend. Yeah, I planted some heirloom turkey red wheat. And I got it from Maine. I got it. It come from a place up in Maine, and uh, I don't know exactly how we'll harvest it or whatever, but I kind of figured. I wouldn't be able to harvest it if it didn't have it planted. So right now is the time of year for us to plant it. So I planted it. When it comes time to harvest it, we'll I worry it about out. that yeah, then. We'll figure it out when that <laughs> if I don't goes. have time to work to fulfill with it, we'll plow it back under and maybe save some seed or something from it just so we can plant more. But <clears throat> I want to harvest it and grind our own flour since we've ground our own cornmeal now. I just planted a small patch of it. Um, my, I only planted 20 pounds of it. And I want to grind our own flour. Um, 
this is an heirloom type wheat so it can be seed saved year after year after year and uh I don't know, I just want to see how it works. And like I said, if we end up not having time to fool with it when that time comes, we'll just plow it under. It ain't no big deal. Um, but you can't grow it. I mean, you can't do it if you ain't got it planted. Right. And we've got one other thing coming up next year that we're probably going to be planting, which I'm not going to tell right now. Make sure mine doesn't fall. <laughs> I'm not going to tell what it is right now. Y'all just have to stick around. You're right going to have to wait till next spring to see that one because... If we do this, we're going to be undertaking probably the biggest... The biggest thing we've ever... The, the biggest chore we've ever, ever grown. Yeah. I mean, it, growing it itself is not going to be that big a deal, but it's the... The harvesting. It's and, the harvesting and the processing after it's yeah. after you're done. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about some, it. Really. Some of y'all might could guess, but I'll tell you, back in the old days, it was a lot more common than it is now. Mm -hmm. People don't grow it quite like they used to. I mean, but... And we've got an older fellow that's willing to come teach us. So, but well, we actually got a few people who are interested in uh, showing us what to do and how to do it. Um, but we are not ready at all. I don't have anything set <laughs> like up to you said do with the wheat. If we don't plant it, we won't. As, but that's it, y'all. <laughs> and see, the great thing about it is there's other stuff I can use it for if we aren't able to. Uh, but you're gonna give too much away. So do what we want to do. But I ain't gonna go no more, no farther into it. But yeah. We're pretty excited about that one. We do have the spot tore up, and I've planted it back in a cover crop right now. And uh, so hopefully we'll be ready for it this spring. Yeah. But that one, that one's going to be a chore. But yeah. we're we're excited about it. I just hope, I hope and pray we find time to make it happen because I, I really want it to. So that, that's the only way I know how to put it. Yeah. I really want it to happen. But um, anyways... What else on here have we not talked the about? The Charleston Gray Watermelon. So that's one that oh, yeah. really, really produced good for us. We planted a bunch of other varieties too, and they did okay. The Charleston Grays definitely did the best, and the Charleston Grays, in my opinion, were the sweetest yeah. out of all of them. Now, the yellow watermelons were pretty good, but the Charleston Grays were, um, they were by far my favorite um, as far as taste, and we got some monsters, massive once oh, again, man. these were grown in that and same poor soil as really, those. Um, the, some, uh, a lot of the other ones busted, and the Charleston Grays didn't, didn't really didn't really bust. So but these were grown in the same poor soil that that corn up there was yeah. grown in, and they done great. Mm -hmm. um, now we had three or four different varieties of watermelon up there, and I have no clue what those other varieties were. I can't remember. Well, sugar baby, and then yeah, we did grow some sugar babies, and they were good. We had two types of yellow ones. One of them was from them survival garden seeds, yeah. and they were, I mean, it was pretty good. Um, the color kind of throws you off a little bit, but. Yeah, it's uh, different, but it, they were, they were all right. Um, but the Charleston Grays were the best, I think. And I'm pretty sure Charleston, Charleston Gray might be an heirloom, too, so you can was, save seed yeah, from it. Okay. We can't from those because I'm sure they were cross-pollinated, but I'm pretty sure you can save seed from those. Um, so that's another thing I want to mention. Probably, if you'd asked me two years ago about saving a seed, I would have looked at you like I used crazy. I used to talk about saving seeds back then. You'd be like, I ain't fooling with that. Yeah, you, you wanted to do it. I didn't care <laughs> about it because you'd go to the store and buy however much you wanted to of it. Right, that's what you used to tell me. And I mean, I was like, I'm not going to fool with saving those seeds if I can go to the store and buy it. So my opinion on that has changed a little bit now, though. Well, two um, years ago, we didn't know we'd be in the boat we are now. So. Yeah, well, yeah, we probably don't need to talk about all that. But <laughs> um, the, I, my opinion has greatly changed on saving seeds. Now, there's a lot of things that the hybrids way outperform your heirloom stuff. That's for sure. But I can tell you right now, as far as that going back to that Hickory King corn and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure that it's them... It's got the Roundup Ready corn beat all the pieces. I think it outperforms some of these newer hybrid varieties, and there's a lot of people who would probably argue with me on that, and I guess I'll just let them argue, but that's my opinion on it. And uh, I can tell you, like on the tomatoes and stuff, as far as heirloom tomatoes go, they yeah. don't perform Besides near the as well. Wives. But see, the brandy wines in the gardens got eat up by with the blight, blight. But, but the one that was out here by that itself came up was by fine. itself. It was two of them came up out there. One well, they on were each out side there, the and they were somewhere yeah. up here. They were everywhere. Yeah, but those did fine. So I guess the blight was like in our, in our probably in our garden. Yeah. But um, I think the farther on we go, the more important trying to save some type of seed is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and it, and it really even back then, I didn't think nothing much of it. But nowadays, 
after doing a lot of research and stuff on it, there's been so many types of varieties of seeds that have been lost over the years because people just quit planting them. And I think that's a bad thing because those seeds that they were saving every year were adapted to your location. You may, you may not even have a clue what variety it was, but those seeds were adapted to your location and, and done well here. So they saved the seeds from the one that done well and they just kept progressing and progressing and progressing. And now we get stuff from just anywhere and plant it and expect it to do good. Well, it's just like down, for example, what's that seed company you like to buy? White Quarrels. White Quarrels. Because ain't they from local or something? Well, it's a local seed company, but I'm sure their seeds don't come from I mean, I don't they, know where their, their seeds, seeds come from. Their seeds, for us, for whatever reason. They do. Now, see, that's the that's the brand of seeds that the, the local seed companies here sell. And I can just about guarantee that everything we plant from that company, it's called White Quarrels. Mm -hmm. They're down in Garner, North Carolina. And I can about guarantee that every single seed we plant from that company comes up, comes up and does what it's supposed mm -hmm. to do. Because um, we've bought other seed varieties like the tractor supply and stuff sales. And yeah, I mean, we've had decent luck with some of it. Some of it we've had good luck with, some of it not so much. But um, I don't know that it... I don't know that you could... I mean, like I said, that White Quarles is a local company to North Carolina. But their seed stock, I'm sure, probably comes from somewhere else. I, I don't know that much about them. So I, they're only all, they, you know, you couldn't walk up to White Quarrels down there in Garner and buy a seed from them. They are a distributor that distributes to your all your different stores. Um, but anyways, I do feel like, though, that people should probably start saving seeds. And, you know, you can save seeds from anything, even if it is a hybrid you save the seeds from it and replant it, you're going to get something. So just keep that in mind, just in case you were in a bind. You're going to get something out of that hybrid. It just may not be true. It, it won't be true to whatever it was. Like you get but, a tomato, but it may just not be just like the tomato you got the seed from. Exactly. But you'll get something. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I guess that's about it for this talk. You know, as far we had a lot of failures this year, and we had a lot of great successes. Yeah, we learned a lot this year. We learned a ton this year, and uh, maybe upcoming soon, we can talk more about how we're going to do things different next year. All right. Maybe. That maybe. sounds good. Let us know in the comments what you think. We love to hear you, hear from y'all. Um, you know, if any of these names rung a bell to you, if they did good, did bad, you know, um, or if you love candy corn and say, what in the world's wrong with y'all? Yeah, you're right. you know, Because everybody's got I'm, their own I'm opinion. always interested to, to hear, you know, from all of y'all. So I appreciate y'all watching this evening. And um, I guess until next time. Yep. And this was not all we planted. Yeah, that's just This was we, just what we highlighted on. Yeah, off the top of our heads. Yeah. So, um, you know, because that don't even count our early spring stuff and the stuff right. we planted this fall. We got so. all our fall fall crops in right now. I will, tell you that that. I will tell you that collard greens love raised beds, apparently. I will tell you that because my collard greens and them raised beds, man. And those collard greens are the ones from the survival seeds that y'all saw us planting in that earlier video mm -hmm. of getting ready for fall garden. Yep. And they we have done excellent. And leaves, I'm telling y'all, man, they... I love collard greens. They are some of the prettiest <laughs> collards we've ever had. Yeah. They love that raised bed, though. But anyways, all right. Well, I guess that's it. And uh, don't forget to like this video if you did like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And remember to share it with some friends if you think somebody gets something out of this video. And uh, we'll talk to y'all next time. Have a good See ya.